Batman Noel, written and illustrated by Lee Bermeo, read by a full cast of YouTubers. Part 1. Okay, you want me to tell you a story? I gotta be honest, I'm not so good at it. My dad, boy could he spin a yarn. He could suck you right in from the beginning like any old good storyteller. He'd keep you stuck to your seat, hook, line, and sinker. Yep, dad was probably better at telling stories than anybody else. Just ask my mom. First thing though, you gotta tell me something, because for this story to make sense, for it to mean anything, you have to believe in something. Something very important. You have to believe that people can change. And I'm talking change in a positive way. Change for the better. I'm talking about the idea that a person can change years of programming and habit and turn them on their ass. That when the deck is stacked against him, he can get the stones to overcome. It might be difficult for you to understand, you're just a kid. In life, as people get older, they get set in their ways. Most people never change. It's too scary. Like staring off the edge of a cliff. Most people just... can't make the leap. Some people want to change. Desperately. But the deck is stacked too high against them. Take Bob, for example. If he could, old Bob here would change almost everything about his life. This Bob. He's a stand-up kind of fellow. Trouble is, he's been down on his luck since, like, forever, and has a family to take care of. Sick little boy. His job, well, let's just say it ain't exactly the stuff of dreams. A dead-end job in a dead-end town. And his boss? Don't even get me started on that guy. The definition of cutthroat. A cruel abomination of a man who only cared about money, and nothing else. People would whisper his name, almost afraid to say it out loud. What the hell did he call himself? at the tip of my tongue. If you're going to work for me, don't get caught clowning around. Take this bag to the alley between Washington and 17th. Stop by the Jack in the Box and pick up what's mine. Get this right and you can come home with a smile. <laughs> anyway, Bob was desperate. The medical bills were stacking up with the economy in the toilet Getting work wasn't exactly an option, even if it meant doing a job he didn't really like for a guy he liked even less. Man, I can't believe I don't remember this guy's name. It was like a sound effect or something. When Dad first told me, I thought he was just slurring. Oh yeah, that's right. Guy's name was Scrooge. What a name, huh? Anyway, like I said, uh, the Scrooge guy didn't care about anyone. He didn't even want to give Bob Christmas off to spend with his kid. To Scrooge, giving him the day off was like letting him get away with a crime. Let's talk for a second about the Scrooge guy. We all know by now that he's a mean old bastard. But what we don't know is how cunning he can be. You don't get into a position Scrooge was in by being a dummy. It wasn't just that people were scared of him, and believe me, they were. It was that people trusted in him, always being five steps ahead of the game. Once he saw what he wanted, there wasn't much that could stop him. I mean, Bob didn't want to argue with the guy, but he had made a promise to his son that they would spend Christmas together. Scrooge, however, wouldn't budge about the time off. He had other plans. Christmas was just another day. Another day, another dollar. Sure, Bob needed the money, but it wasn't the most important thing in his life. He may have been down in his luck, but ultimately his son was more important to him than anything else. Please, don't. I, I got a kid. Don't hurt me. You have one chance. You're gonna tell me where he is. You won't lie if you want to walk out of here. I... Uh, but but I, I... I didn't... I mean, he, he never... TELL ME! I just got a note. I, I never... I mean, I even met with him. I swear. Oh, Christ. I, I swear to God, all I was supposed to do was drop off the bag and, and pick up the money. How is he going to contact you? He was going to send me another note with, with instructions. Look, p please don't. You won't be getting another note. He'll find out that you don't have his money and come to collect in spades. Jesus, please, just... 
Scum. You never cease to amaze me. Do you have any idea what was in that delivery bag? You should be going to jail tonight! Consider yourself lucky that you make a better piece of live bait than jail bait! Bob, being the good guy that he was, considered himself lucky for a guy down on his luck. Long story short, he managed to convince Scrooge to give him the day off. Insurance issues or something. There was one condition. He would have to come to work at the crack of dawn the next day after Christmas. And be ready to work his ass off. Now, Bob may have had a bit of dumb luck from time to time, but stupid was something he was not. He knew that the miserable old Scrooge would make him pay for letting him get away with taking a holiday. See, old Scrooge was vindictive like that. No good deed goes unpunished and all that jazz. Bob was afraid of him, no doubt about that. It was a time he would have just quit. That was before the kid, though. He had responsibilities now. Stuff you can't just run away from. It seemed like everyone and everything constantly reminded Bob of how limited his options were. The thought followed him like a dog tracking his scent. And the dog was big and scary. Fear is a funny thing. Some guys can get so scared that they let the fear stop them in their tracks. It's like a thick wall keeping them from where they want to go. Other guys? Well, they break through. They let the fear drive them. Scroogey was that kind of fella. Nothing and no one had ever stopped him. Another joke goes right over your head. Uh, too slow, old man. He had forgotten what it was like to want. Now our buddy Bob, he was the master of want. He would have given anything to be the fearless type. He wished he could be the tough guy. Someone who took the bull on by the horns, all that brass. The kind of man who makes things happen instead of waiting for them to fall into his lap. Big house, fancy car, you know what I'm talking about. Truth be told, Bob was never much of a winner. He lived in a crappy little ramshackle apartment in a crappier neighborhood. Tim had a bum leg. I'm not quite sure exactly what was wrong with him, but his health wasn't all that great. He was a big ray of sunshine, though. Real good kid. The kind of kid that makes you... Well, let's just say it sucks that he was so bad off. The Cratchit family, see, were the type to complain about their position in life. They didn't have much, but what they did have was appreciated. Dad! Love, you know? There's a lot of love there. Myself. I had to take the plant from Miss Catractus' porch, but it was dying anyway, so she said I could have it. And sides, it looks cooler like this. Huh? See, I made the ornaments out of an old soap can and some pieces of beer bottles. Plus, I had an old army man that I stuck some string through his head so he could. Tim! Damn it, not now, okay? Jeez. <sighs> hey, hey. Hey, buddy. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to snap at you. I, it's just a hell of a day, that's all. Come on over here. Show me show me what you got there. It's not a thing. It's our Christmas tree, Dad. Yeah, sure. I knew that. Uh, that's what I meant. See, I found all this stuff out by the dumpster. I was trying to make it look like those ornaments you see in the stores on the 5th. I, I thought it would be cool to draw... The Superman emblem on my army man because he just didn't seem very Christmassy and Superman is more like Santa, you know, with the red colors and all. I also thought it would be cool to have a Batman thingy on there too because Bobby Mills has a Batman decoration on his tree. That's... Now why the hell would you want to put Batman on a Christmas tree? I mean, Batman isn't exactly Christmassy either, you know? I, I mean, he can be scary, dressed all in black. But I thought Batman was one of the good guys. Bobby Mills says he only hurts people that have done something bad. I mean, I guess. Maybe things ain't always that black and white. Sometimes even good people do bad things. A lot of love in the Cratchit house. But not a lot of anything else. This Scrooge guy, on the other hand, he had everything. Big house, fancy cars, power. The guy had more money than he knew what to do with. 
The place was dark and damp, as dingy, dim, and empty as his heart, well, some might say. And he liked it that way. See, old Scrooge wasn't very good with people. He preferred solitude. Spent most of his life completely obsessed with his work. <coughs> there wasn't time for anything else. Other people just seemed to be a nuisance. Ignok, sir. May I hazard a guess and say you've caught something of a cold running around outside in the freezing night? Or would this be an absurd assumption? I'm not sick, Alfred. It's just the change in temperature and the humidity of the cave. Ah, yes, most certainly. It is, after all, impossible for the Dark Knight to get the sniffles. Master Wayne, your disregard for the privacy of others aside, may I ask? This one is going to lead me to the Joker. Small fish. But sometimes that's all you need to get a bigger one. Small fish indeed. This one has a child. Do you honestly intend to put a risk at- They all have children, Alfred. The father is just another criminal degenerate. Bagman for the Joker. <laughs> Not a very good one at that. Just left the money behind and ran. Cowardly. The- the lot, <laughs> lot of them. The clown isn't the type to let lost money go without coming back to settle his debts. And just what do you intend to do? Wait for the madman to make a house call? It's the most promising lead I've got. In this war, Alfred, there are risks you must be willing to take. <sighs> <coughs> I take the same risk every time I let someone like this go. I take the risk that he will raise his child to be exactly like him. I take the risk that in ten years, his boy will be walking in the streets with colors and a gun in his belt. I risk the future, which they risk only the present. <coughs> <coughs> I know only too well, Master Bruce. Lest we forget, there was another boy whose future was risked on my watch. I'll take the liberty of bringing down some cold medication with your dinner. Yep, work was all that mattered to Scrooge. His anger and loss had consumed him to the point where human contact was nearly impossible. I say loss because his life hadn't always been like this. He hadn't always been alone. Once he'd been a different man, he'd shared his passion for work with a partner. He and his partner, they made a good team. He was a younger man then. Life still seemed like it was full of hope. Hope for the future. Hope for change. Anything seemed possible. Things that would have appeared ridiculous to old Scrooge now were just roads yet to be taken, yet to be explored and conquered. But that was then, and this is now. Now, his partner was long gone, dead and buried for years, just like Scrooge's youthful optimism. That younger man had been replaced by something harder and darker, something unforgiving and unmerciful. On this particular night, though, old Scrooge had a visitor. Now, some people say that this thing he saw was a spirit of some sort. Others think that it was just a figment of his imagination. Maybe even a little bit of his conscience playing tricks on his mind. I ain't one to believe in all that superstitious mumbo-jumbo. I like to think that what he saw in the dark loneliness of that night and his vision looked a hell of a lot like his dead partner. A ghost from his past, with a message from the future. He had come to deliver a warning, that if Scrooge continued to live his life as an angry, vengeful, and spiteful man, there would be a price. Every man's gotta pay up one day, stand up and be counted for what he's done in his life, that bad things you do become heavy weights. Scrooge had to change before it was too late.